Hey there everyone, this is SHR Modding and welcome back to another tutorial uh, regarding uh, sound modeling uh, on this channel and today what we're going to do is install um, three pieces of audio software uh, set them up and then we're going to briefly look through uh, the, F, uh, the uh, Assetto Corsa uh, SDK and briefly look through the standard uh, default FMOD uh, project we're going to install FMOD as well of course um, and because FMOD is the biggest of the pieces of software that we're going to install um, we're going to install that first so if you go to your web browser of choice uh, and type into your search engine of choice FMOD Studio uh, as you see I've already done before uh, let's go into the downloads uh, section and you will be required to create an account with FMOD. Uh, within that account, it'll ask you for the basic things like email address, your name, etc. And then it'll ask you if you want to use FMOD for personal use or for commercial use. And you must select uh, personal use uh, because uh, commercially, obviously, you're not running a business and you're not the head of a, a, a dev team, etc. Uh, or, or I assume you're not. Uh, you might be, um, but but yeah, uh, what we're using it for here is a hobbyist slash personal uh, use case. So once you've created all your account and got your verification all sorted, etc., I think they ask you, uh, they send an email to your account, uh, and you click the link and get verified, etc., just to make sure you're not a robot. Um, you will uh, then be allowed uh, to view this page, this downloads page. Um, because my account is private, uh, I'm not going to go through that process um, for privacy purposes. Once you've finished that and once you're all set up, then what you need to do is come to this page. So as we said, search for FMOD Studio, uh, click on download and that will take you to this section. Now we can discard all of these uh, tabs here and we're, looking at, we're only looking at FMOD uh, Studio Suite and which version do we need well actually if we go to the Assetto Corsa SDK which is in your default Assetto Corsa uh, root folder uh, and then SDK audio and the audio SDK PDF which is which is here uh, it tells you that the version of FMOD we need is 1.08.12 and I've tried it with newer FMOD versions and it doesn't work uh, so this is the version of FMOD you will need uh, to, for your sounds to work in a set of Corsa uh, so we're going to go so we're going to go to older uh, because we're not that's the you know these two versions are too new for us and then we're going to select uh, 1.08.12 from the list uh, it says unsupported uh, don't worry about that uh, since I said of course it's not going to be updated anyway uh, FMOD is not going to be updated but do keep a copy of this installer on your PC just in case that one day uh, it doesn't uh, appear in this list uh, so just keep the installer uh, on your PC uh, so we're at 1.2 yeah okay depending on whether your operating system is 64 or 32 bit install the uh, relevant version minus 64 so I will download that uh, I've done that already of course uh, so I won't show you that here but you click on download um, launch uh, run the uh, installer and it will guide you through install fmod in your in your programs directory wherever it is meaning you might need to go and visit that later so do know exactly where you've installed it so that's fmod uh, done and dusted um, let's install the three pieces of audio software that I uh, use and the reason why I use three pieces of audio software is because um, each piece of audio software does a different thing very well or very intuitively very easily now the ideal situation obviously would be to use one uh, audio software uh, and be able to do all all necessary steps and uh, tweaks and edits in that one software but unfortunately um, it's harder to do certain things or less intuitive let's say 
to do certain things in, 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 in certain pieces of software and more intuitive in others. And that software is called Goldwave. As you may already know, I use Goldwave for the bulk of my editing. Um, if Again, if you click on the downloads uh, section and just download it for Windows, uh, you can use either of these downloads, they're all the same. Uh, there is a Google Play app and an App Store version as well, uh, however, I don't think they are full featured as the desktop one. Uh, so go ahead, download that. That's a relatively small download, install it. Um, and yeah, we'll set it up after we've installed all three pieces of software. The next one I'd like to install is Audacity. I'm going to install Audacity by, go by using the same method. Going to downloads, uh, click on the installer for Windows 10 that should uh, download a executable for you, which you can easily launch and install. And then the last one is Waver Saw. And again, if you go to downloads and then install the whichever version of Windows you have 32 or 64 bit, install the relevant version. Uh, the latest stable build is the best one that you can use. I think you can use. Uh, uh, these ones are manual downloads, so better to use the the all the, the packed versions of the executables. And these pieces of software are very trustworthy. Uh, there's no need to worry about any viruses or any adware being installed uh, without your permission. So having said that, um, I think what we'll do is we'll set up the audio software first. Uh, so what we're going to do is, uh, oh, this is me recording at the moment, so I'm just going to. Uh, open another instance of Goldwave and show you the main uh, setup tweaks that I make. So the first thing I do is go to Options, Control Properties and then um, uh, we'll go to Devices. Uh, so this basically tells the software what you want to use as your playback device and what you want to use as your recording device. Now the excellent thing about Goldwave is that uh, the playback device you can obviously select from a range of uh, playback devices so I have my headphones which I'm using currently and I also have a set of PC speakers which I, I use from time to time so any anything within this audio editor will play back through my headphones now and for recording uh, obviously as you saw I'm uh, recording uh, through this software using my microphone on on uh, on my PC not my headset microphone I wanted to switch to the headset microphone I would uh, switch to that but the great thing about this is you can loop back uh, any of your sound uh, devices so it will record anything you hear through your um, uh, PC speakers uh, or your headphones so those are the main settings to cover in the um, uh, Goldwave sound editor now we're going to go into Audacity and we're going to change some settings in Audacity. So if you go to Edit and then Preferences, and uh, you can see I think I've already changed some of these. Uh, so we're just going to go to Devices and Playback Devices. Uh, obviously, select whichever device you're using. At the moment, I'm using headphones. So I want to play the sounds, etc., back uh, in my headphones. Uh, of course, I've only got two channels on these headphones. Um, devices, obviously. Where the ah, this is for recording now. It's the same things we we did in uh, Goldwave. So you want to record from your headset, i.e. the speakers. Uh, actually, this is this is the microphone uh, in my headset. So you can record from the microphone or from the the separate US uh, the separate microphone that I'm using right now. So I've got two devices. You might have more or less. Uh, but notice that this doesn't have uh, the option here to loop back like Goldwave did. Um, so I don't know if uh, Audacity supports that or not, perhaps in the recording tab, no. Um, so yeah, this is what I was saying, that much more intuitive in certain pieces of software to do certain things and less intuitive in others. So the reason why I use Audacity is because of the spectrogram. Uh, and I, this is just something that I'm very, very recently, I, I, I very, very recently started uh, to look into and to use edit for editing samples. Um, so what I found is that in the spectrogram settings, uh, the default settings are way off for what we really need. Uh, so in the minimum frequency, I'll, I'll explain all this um, uh, later when we come into editing samples and that kind of 
that kind of thing. But for now, just change the settings to 50, uh, about 3,000. I think you can probably even get away with, uh, um, yeah, 3,000 seems okay. And leave these as they are. And then you're looking at frequencies, you're looking at uh, window size, perhaps changing this to pitch, for example, might help. I haven't actually tried this option, uh, but if, if I, uh, when we get onto the spectrogram uh, editing section of this tutorial series, um, I will recap these settings, or I'll try to remember to recap these settings, and I may have changed some uh, by then, because I may have tinkered around with them a lot more than I have uh, now. So that's the main thing we use, we, we do in Audacity. And Waversaw um, looks like this. And I haven't customized anything Waver Saw because I don't use it for recording. Um, the only thing I've done in Waver Saw is to uh, edit the colors of various uh, aspects of the UI so that it matches Gold Wave a lot better uh, because that's the color scheme I'm used to. So that's all I've done here. So we're just going to close uh, all of the editors. Uh, let's just make sure my other one's still running. Yes, it is. And we're going to briefly have a look over the Assetto Corsa Audio Pipeline PDF, which can be found, uh, as we said, in your SDK, audio folder. Yeah. So this basically, this is your go-to PDF for anything uh, sound mod related if you're stuck. Um, it basically explains what events and parameters are uh, in, a, in a basic way. It goes through the list of events that, you, that are common to all cars. It goes through the list of events uh, that are car specific. So this is all of these. So for example, let's just go through one. So event name. So this is an event name. So we're just going to go through the engine X event. So the parameters that you can change in this event are RPM, throttle, distance, event core and angle. And the description obviously just explains these. So RPM is obviously engine RPM. Throttle is the gas pedal position. So if you're on full throttle, it'll be one because the range is explained here. So so we'll, we'll go through like this. So we'll go, RPM is obviously engine RPM, and the range of that, so the, the range of values you can have for this parameter are zero to whatever the car revs to. So you can have zero to 9,000, zero to 10,000, for example, zero to 20,000 in the case of, if you're, for example, if you're making or modeling a sound for a mid 2000s V10 Formula One car, um, so if you're doing a road car, like a diesel road car, for example, then zero to 4,000. So you can change that as necessary. Throttle position is always zero to one. One meaning full throttle, zero meaning off throttle. And you have all values in between. Distance is obviously zero to as needed. So that's the distance from the car, uh, distance away from the car. So for example, if you have the car all the way at the other end of a long straight and your camera is viewing it from the other end of the long straight uh, then you will your car will be very quiet the closer the car gets to the camera the louder the car will get and this is reflected in the distance parameter event cone angle this is the angle of the car towards you so for example this is 0 to 180 you can't change this or you shouldn't change this uh, so if the car is facing towards you uh, then the angle is uh, 180 and if the car is facing away from you, i.e. the rear of the car is facing towards you, then the angle is zero. Anything in between is anything in between. Uh, and so this can be used then to uh, use, uh, this can be used then to insert different car sounds for when the car is coming towards you and different samples for when the car is going away from you. So that's just explanation of that, an explanation of that uh, parameter uh, sorry event there and it explains all of the different events that you can have uh, based on uh, the standard fmod project right now what we're going to do is we are going to go into the assetto corsa uh, fmod uh, project folder <coughs> and in your uh, SDK, you will open this. Um, oh, it's going to open in the wrong version of FMOD. Cancel that. So you will you will open this. This is the brand new version of FMOD uh, 2.01, I think. 
which is not the version we use for a set of Corsa. At the moment, this will not be associated uh, with FMOD uh, at all. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to right click on this, then go to properties, and where it says a uh, type of file, it won't know what type of file it is. Perhaps it will just give you the suffix at the end. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to tell it to launch FMOD uh, every time you double click this then you won't have to uh, go through this process or you won't have to go through right click open with you won't have to go through all that so right click properties change the default program and you see because I've used FMOD before it's suggesting another version of FMOD but you won't have that so what you're going to do is select more apps scroll all the way down to the bottom look for another app on this PC then here's why I said that you need to remember the location where you installed FMOD uh, I know where I installed mine FMOD Studio, that's the wrong one 1.08.12 uh, and here is the FMOD Studio EXE so you need to remember where you installed FMOD so that you can set the default program for this type of file for the FMOD Studio project file file type and then click open I've already done that so I won't do it again and then what you can do is you'll be able to double click this and it will open automatically in FMOD. Mine, mine is a bit different because I have multiple versions of FMOD installed. Uh, one for a set of course, one for Automobilista 2, and one for some work I did with some guys who were modding uh, uh, a set of course of banks onto Richard Burns Rally. Uh, so what I do is I open my version of FMOD, which is 1.08.12, and then I go file open. Oops and then I open this uh, you would open this uh, sorry you would open this so you see it's a set of Corsa SDK audio AC FMOD etc you would open this but because I've edited this uh, and I've uh, duplicated the sound the, the cars and uh, added my own sounds etc I have kept a backup of this uh, the original project here uh, so you can see how the original project looks so when you open the original project you will see these five folders you've got cars collisions common showroom and services cars is obviously the cars any cars that you make will go here collisions are a set of course the default collision sounds these are global these are not per car so you cannot change uh, these on a car to car basis let's see what sounds there are okay so you hear that sound uh, you can recognize that from a gate from in game as well yeah this is when you hit a barrier so that seems like a light contact that's a slightly heavier one and this is a massive contact yeah so uh, the way you can see that is impact angle nothing happens here impact speed there you go so you can see how this is affected by impact speed so so we're saying 10 miles an hour is going to be this 14, 14 above is going to be that I think it's might be kilometers an hour might be miles an hour actually I'm not sure uh, 100 anything above 100 is going to be that massive crash sound so you now you can instantly see how the volume of these sounds varies with the speed. So obviously at you know very low speed this is going to be very quiet. When it gets higher it's going to be decently loud. Uh, of course it's just a normal quiet sound anyway. Not not that severe. This one is more severe. Yeah. And that's when the car is going this fast and then for this speed and higher they put this massive sound in. So depending on how fast you're going when you crash, uh, these different sounds will play. Yeah. So this is basically how FMOD works. This is how this is how you arrange sounds, how you arrange samples. This is just a simple, uh, a simple implementation. We're going to have a look at surfaces, for example, uh, curbs. So we have a curb sound. Okay. That's the default Assetto Corsa curb sound. We can expand this to have a look at other settings for this sample. 
uh, but we don't need to do any anything to it. I'm just showing you what's 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 the uh, score here. So you see now we have two subtracts for this track. So we have curb short pitch. One is always going to be volume. Curb short pitch, and you see we have a timeline here, yeah? and we have a loop region set to the timeline. So if I play this can't hear anything yet well that's for good reason see how it keeps looping it keeps looping that sample yeah and that's because every time you go over a curb you don't want the curb sound to stop you want it to continue until you uh, drive off the curb if we increase the speed you see what happened what's happening so if we increase the speed, you see what's happening. So first of all, we have the volume increases to minus two decibels ish around. Let's just call it 50 miles an hour. It's a bit higher than that. At the same time, though, we have this variation in pitch that is not an autom automated variation it's a, a modulated variation that's there's two different things this is a mod pitch modulation here we can change this yeah I'm just gonna undo that so as the speed increases the pitch of that sample increases until you get to like really really fast speeds that you probably never uh, drive at very often that make sense and the decay is I'm not entirely sure what the decay does but if the decay is say I presume uh, the decay when you're not on the curb is this and when you are on the curb it's this as soon as you get off the curb it'll go away as far as I know but I'm not sure 100% about the decay <coughs> so this is how uh, pitch uh, automation can be used sorry pitch modulation can be used uh, to change the pitch of a sample with regards to a particular parameter in this case the parameter is speed so these are events and these are parameters parameters change uh, the samples pitch etc settings you can even do low pass high pass filters volume etc any aspect of a sound can be changed in relation to a parameter so <clears throat> let's go with the example of the car sound so the external sound of the tatus if we go to distance I'm just gonna play the car yeah yours might not play so what I do what to do is just go go to a suitable RPM where it starts to play and then you're going to increase the distance and you see the further away we get from the car the quieter it gets okay we'll also see that the lower the RPM is the lower the sound is and the higher the RPM is the higher the sound is now you can't see any uh, pitch tracks here you can't even see a pitch track in the master the master controls everything uh, so if you if we put a volume curve in the master like this for example see how it gets extremely quiet extremely loud yeah this is what the master does increases uh, or decreases any parameter globally in the whole event uh, so as you can see there's no, there's absolutely no uh, pitch uh, automation in this. There's no pitch track and there's no pitch curve. So how is the pitch varying? So this is what we call auto pitch. So every sample in this uh, engine, uh, in, in these engine parameters has a section called auto pitch. And what that does is it sets the root pitch of the sample based on an RPM so for example 
Uh, let's have a look at a sample from one of my cars. Uh, I think I deleted a lot of the, a lot of them from here. Ah, C63. I haven't released this sound yet. Let's have a look at the on seven thousand, uh, on six thousand. Okay. So you see the root pitch now. If I was to insert this. I'd want, I don't know why it's not playing anymore, uh, that's a bit of a bug, right, so I'd want so basically what I'm trying to say here is this is this is 6000 rpm in the real car and so what you want ideally is to put 6000 rpm here and then position that sample around about 6000 rpm because you want 6000 rpm to be the natural pitch the real pitch of that audio sample so this audio sample we can see the real pitch of this audio sample is 5.25 thousand rpm so if we listen to this that means at 5.25, you can type it in, okay, this sample will be at its natural pitch. You hear that? Yeah? Now, we're not actually playing that sample, we're playing this one. And its uh, natural pitch is at 6000. So, what they've done here is they've really shifted these over to the left a bit than what they should really be uh, but it's not big of not big of a deal because the difference between that and that it's not that much so oh and and the other thing you you know that you know with um the other thing that you know with this is that the only value you edit is this one the uh, uh root pitch uh, value you don't edit the minimum pitch. The minimum pitch is always zero uh, because the minimum pitch at zero RPM is zero. The pitch only starts increasing when you start increasing the RPM for every single sample. So regardless, these root pitches are edited in a fashion that regardless of what sample I put here, which has been edited, the pitch of the engine will always be the same. Listen same pitch same pitch oops same pitch same pitch this is a limiter sample there you go same pitch so everything is the same pitch at that same point at that same RPM uh, point and that's how they um, uh, perfectly align in pitch with each other that's why when I go from this sample to this sample to this sample to this sample to this sample then they can uh, really flow really well into each other and that's because they're all the same pitch at the same RPM and you can do you can only do that with auto pitch if that doesn't make sense it's a bit long-winded uh, but when we start editing uh, together a, a mod uh, or we start looking through some of the ones I've done or even more of this one it'll start to make sense a lot more now let's have a look at another important aspect the throttle uh, you can see it up here and you can see it down here as well and this changes uh, all, all this does is it changes which uh, track uh, is being played when the throttle is on and when the throttle is off and you can change this up uh, any, any way you want to so at the moment this track will play when the throttle is on simply because the volume is raised up and when, this, when the throttle is off the volume is down so this track won't play so 
the opposite is true for the for the bottom track and as you can see that is coarse which means it's off throttle so any samples that you want to to be played whilst off throttle go in this track and any samples that you want to be played on throttle will go in this track I don't really agree with these uh, curves but they serve the basic purpose and they do what's necessary uh, in terms of switching between off samples and on samples now for example if we go to the C63 on 7000, which is the highest I got. And we go off high. This is crashing for some reason. I don't know why that is. So you see how there's a difference between on and off. So like I showed you before, properties, because the other the default uh, because the default Windows um, um player is giving me problems, so I just go to VLC and I go to set that as uh, my default audio player then I can just double click on any of these show you how they sound instantly So there, so you see basically how off and on throttle samples are very different and so you need two tracks, uh, at least two tracks in the externals and in the internals uh, to switch between them when you go on and off throttle. So the next parameter is event cone angle and as you can see there's no volume curves here currently in any of the tracks but there is one in the master which means it will affect all of the tracks. So what they've done here is, remember how we said that uh, 0 degrees is the rear of the car and uh, 180 degrees is the front of the car. So what they've done here is they've uh, taken the volume down and the volume up here. So what, in essence what that does is, when you listen to the car from the front it will be quieter and when you listen from the rear it will be louder. Um, what you can do is if you implement volume curves like this uh, in the individual tracks rather than the master then you can have uh, the car uh, with completely different samples from the front and completely different samples from the rear and you can double up on these tracks uh, so you can have four tracks um, and then you can put volume curves in the distance uh, so, and you can have samples from when the car is far away and you can have samples from when the car is close to you uh, so you can have like six or seven tracks if you want to go that complex like I do and of course that's not the point of this uh, tutorial this tutorial is just to give you a basic understanding of how these parameters and these events work together <coughs> engine internal is relatively the same except we see that we've got throttle will tell you the throttle parameter will tell you which uh, tracks are there for uh, on throttle and which off throttle because zero means off one means on, anything in between is anything in between. So these two are for obviously off throttle. Uh, obviously these are labeled as well, uh, but uh, if you lose track of what's uh, on and what's off, if you label them differently, then you can uh, uh, look in here. Uh, so uh, double clicking on here will allow you to label it. So here we see there's been, there's been some more effects applied to that specific track only and that one too. Uh, on the master there's nothing applied except a 3D panner um, so what we see here is basically an, a main on throttle sound and a supplement sound and then a main off throttle sound and a supplement sound and 
what they've done here is they've got the in main internal sound of the car yeah so if we mute this we can play the proper internal car sound there are some volume discrepancies with this uh, simply because it's not meant to be used on its own then what they've done is they've overlaid it with this which is which sounds more like an external sound when you play them both together you can get a mixture of internal and external ever so slightly uh, in my opinion this is not a very good technique to use at all uh, especially with the uh, tin top cars uh, like GT3's um, uh, like like most of my sound mods um, no not a good technique to use because from the internal uh, from, from the cockpit you won't hear any external sounds unless you're going through a reverb zone like a bridge or a, a narrow uh, start finish straight or that kind of thing uh, for the off throttle sounds they've done something very similar so if we uh, mute this track, go to the off throttle sounds, which is basically if you if you look how I'm changing the parameter at the top here, I'm just uh, clicking the mouse and moving it up and down, clicking and dragging it, and then I let go. Uh, that's how you adjust these parameters without actually going into the tab for the parameter. Um, it shows you uh, how that this shows you basically how these volume curves work in effect and so what we're doing here is we're going to mute that secondary uh, sound and then increase the RPM so I'm not sure if these are the same samples uh, that I used over here just at a different volume or a different EQ uh, but it sounds very similar. Now normally you'd have complete off throttle sounds, completely different sounds. And this is the secondary uh, uh I need I forgot to do the RPM. That's with the secondary sounds added in. If we mute the main ones. So this is obviously this is a mixture of these two tracks and the reason for that is they haven't actually muted this one fully when it's off throttle they've just made it quieter if I mute it fully then you get the full uh, experience uh, so there you hear the difference between on and off throttle this one obviously is more prominent um, and that's what, what the main difference in the sound is now this one on this track and this track they've added a um, uh, equalizer with three uh, steps to uh, filter out some of the treble on this one and same with that one but to a lesser extent uh, we're not going to get into any of this yet this is something that we can uh, tinker around with when we get into more advanced uh, learning Unfortunately, my recorder called it quits uh, after that, and so I think uh, we'll call it quits as well for this tutorial. Um, the next one, we'll, we'll continue where we left off, and uh, we'll go through all of the remaining events, and then maybe we'll plug some samples in, adjust some curves, uh, play around with some of the parameters, and see what effect that has in-game. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.